Templates is a wonderful gift, and uh, we recognize that one size does not fit all. That's been mentioned a couple times tonight. Uh, you poor folks are having to sit there and listen to people lecture you. I apologize for that. But we, I think we've learned, and our teachers tell us, and we all know inherently, that a lot of people don't learn that way. Sitting and listening to lecture is not always the best way to impart knowledge. And so technology it gives our teachers more tools to meet each student where he is and to help them to fill the gaps, to catch up where they're behind. So yes, we've got to move in this direction. And Texas is getting there, but we've got a long way to go. And again, it goes back to local control because folks in Tyler ISD and even at the campus level and the classroom level knows what the needs are much better than Austin and certainly than Washington. And so uh, the technology is there. Digital and blended learning uh, is where everything is going, and it should be. And so we're thankful for this. And yes, the, the government does tend to be kind of slow to embrace changes, and that's part of the reason that we want to push everything we can to the local level where they can be responsible, where they can meet the needs. But we have wonderful teachers. They have great gifts. And this technology can give them more tools so they can meet each kid where he is and meet those needs. And the same thing goes for the accountability system. Again, we've got this messed up system. We rely on these high stakes tests. They're punitive. They're not being used like they should have been used. But technology allows us to do real time assessments. So when, the, when there's a, a, short, a shortfall, when a child's not getting something, we can know sooner and the teacher can deal with it then. And they can come alongside them and help. So yes, we've got to move in this direction. It, it's a, a big part of the solution. And we're all for that. We're going to keep funding that. You're already doing it. And you're not my daughter's favorite person because she got in trouble. When she didn't get a good grade, she had a lot of excuses. And I said, there's no excuse. Have you been on YouTube? There are about a thousand teachers on YouTube and college professors teaching everything that you can imagine. There is no reason for a student not to get a good grade. Now, we know you teach it in the classroom. I taught for years in the military. And as Brian said, students learn at a different pace. The military now has really gone from away from the lecture type thing that they did in the classroom for years to now everyone's on a computer. And they're sitting there learning at their own pace. You get guys who will go into a technical field. At the same time, they'll leave boot camp. They'll go in there. And one may leave a month before the other one. Because he learns differently. He learns faster. And so he was able to do things differently. My own daughter, my youngest, had severe scoliosis. She's had complete back fusion. Okay? One of the things I had to do with her is I had to put her into a private homeschooling online. And it was a teacher. It was, it was a school system. And what was great about it is that it was in the classroom environment. She's sitting in my office behind me. And she's watching the computer. She's looking at it streamed live. And when the teacher had a question, she said, Heather, give me the answer to this. And Heather texted her the, question, the answer right then. And so it was a great system. As I said a while ago, we really need to work to find new and invative, uh, inventive ways to help the children learn. It'll streamline what we're doing. I think it'll keep the kids in class. You know, our kids aren't dumb. They're very smart. A lot of times you see these kids dropping out because they're bored. So I think we need to come up with something new and something that will excite them. And you're doing a great job. Thank you. My wife has a degree from Vanderbilt University, and we have, depending on the child, educated them in public, private, and at home. Each setting is, has its unique advantages and disadvantages. I believe that public schools could capitalize on some of the different strategies that uh, a number of schools are using in public and private schools and home schools. Uh, with the internet and virtual uh, learning. Uh, my daughters, the two that are still at home, some of their teachers are in Austin, some of them are in Pennsylvania, the students are all over the world. Uh, they get to interact with them, they can raise their hand, they can answer questions, they turn in papers, they, they draw, they, uh, they do lots of things. I support freedom. I want to get government out of the way. I want to get Austin out of the way. I want to set teachers free and local school districts to do what they please to best serve their constituents. Textbooks, I'm a publisher, but I support using electronic devices and whatever is the most economical and efficient. 
Um, some people will do better with a physical book, but it is easier to update things with an electronic textbook, and I fully support that. It'll save a lot of money. And um, anyway, freedom is what's made this state and our nation great, and it can work in education as well.